number of people ask me with Hoss's ordination, where is he going? <laughs> Nowhere. He doesn't even get a pay raise. <laughs> so why is he doing it? He's doing it because it's recognizing the hand of God upon him, calling him to full-time Christian service, which he's already doing. It's recognizing what God has already done. A, a number of months ago, I, I gave a message, and part of the application was, if we had more people, we could open more good news clubs. We had two people come forward to, to be teachers in a new good news club. We had Mike Winberry and Terry Wood. And so we opened in January a new good news club. And it's already our biggest good news club. And on Wednesday, we had 19 children make professions of faith. If we had more people who'd be willing to sacrifice one afternoon a week, we could open more and we could do more. Uh, anytime you share the gospel, be sure to put a dot up on the chart. It just keeps a record of that we're actually sharing the gospel and put a heart up if a person receives the Lord. It's not some legalistic thing. It's just an encouragement to us that we're sharing the gospel and we're continuing, to, to, we're intentionally doing that. Would you join me in prayer as we come to a time in the Word? Heavenly Father, still our hearts. Let your spirit speak, and may each of us be conformed to the image of Jesus, because it's in his name that we pray. Amen. We're in the middle of a series dealing with the commandments of the Lord. We've been talking specifically over the past few weeks about some of the beware commands. And last week we talked about beware of the leaven, and this week we're going to be looking at one of the specific aspects of 11, which is hypocrisy. Beware of hypocrisy. In Luke 12, verses 1 through 5, it says this, and let's read this together in respect for God's Word. Let's stand. Luke 12, 1 through 5. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trample one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. I don't know if y'all heard about the young man who's out of work and he saw an advertisement from the zoo uh, saying they had jobs available. And when he checked out the, the job, well, the only thing they had was for him to wear a gorilla suit and pretend to be a gorilla because they had no gorilla at the zoo. And, and he was so desperate for money that he decided to do it. And so he put on the suit. There's a big kid's day coming, and all he had to do is kind of saunter around the pen, and if they threw peanuts, occasionally eat a peanut or a banana or something like that, and swing a little bit on, on the limbs. But, you know, after eight or ten hours of this, he was getting a little tired, and he was swinging on a limb, and he accidentally let go and flew through the air and landed in the lion's den. And he landed in the lion's den, and he started screaming, help, help, help. And the lion pounced on him and says, shut up. You want to get us both fired? <laughs> Things are not always what they seem, are they? You know, hypocrisy. It's rampant. Hey, when was the last time you heard a conversation like this? 
Ethel, I'm never going to Walmart again. There are so many hypocrites in that place. Oh, you don't hear about that about your country club. You, you don't hear about that about the supermarket. You don't hear about your school. Where you hear about it is in the church. Zig Ziglar, some of you may have heard him. He's a motivational speaker. He said he invited one of his friends to church one time, and the guy says, I'm not about to go to church. There are too many hypocrites there. And Ziegler responded, he says, there's always room for one more. <laughs> the commands that we have been looking at from the Lord are, are commands that are warnings for us. The last three weeks and this week are four of the beware. We're being warned to, to, to what? To be alert. It's going to happen. Hypocrisy is real. Leaven is real. Be prepared. When it happens, be situated so that you can handle it when it occurs. And then be steadfast. When it does occur, you stand fast in the Lord and you keep going forward. Hypocrisy is a sin that is rampant in our midst. And it's rampant in the church because, quite honestly, when you look around... Every single one of us is a hypocrite. Oh, not me. Oh, we changed the word. They put on a facade. Oh, what's a facade? It's a mask. Uh, the word hypocrisy, you understand, comes from the theater, and you change mass. So we just put on a facade. We're hypocrites. Every one of us, at different moments, at different times. And, and so we have to be aware that hypocrisy is genuine. It occurs. How often have you gone up to someone and say, how you're doing? Fine! And inside you know they're, they're eaten up with trouble and turmoil. That's hypocrisy. That's putting on a mask. And so it's something we all face. We have to understand that hypocrisy is real. Hypocrisy happens to all of us, myself included. And yet it's something we should avoid. Be aware and deal with it. Uh, we look at the nature of hypocrisy. Uh, hypocrisy begins with one thing. Pride. That, that's the central element associated with hypocrisy. That's its basic motive. It's, it's wanting ourselves to appear better than we actually think that we are. You know, it's interesting to me that children are some of the prime candidates for discerning hypocrisy, especially in their parents. You know, parents who proclaim at church that they're good Christians and yet at home they abuse their children verbally, physically, and other ways. And it turns their children off from church because of the hypocrisy of the parents who, who say one thing and yet do another. We are to be what we are. There's an old country preacher who put it this way, and pardon the grammar. He said, be who you is. Because if you ain't who you is, you is who you ain't. And that's it. And it's all centered on pride. And what it does is it masks itself. It masks itself in lies. Uh, it hides. It wants to hide. You know, the word hypocrite, again, comes from that drama aspect of changing mask, Hiding behind a mask. That's what hypocrisy is all about. We call it being two-faced today. That's claiming hypocrisy is what we're doing. Now, I, I understand that there's a difference between hypocrisy and a Christian who struggles with sin. You know, a Christian who's struggling with sin and, and admits to God, God, I, I'm struggling with it. Uh, help me. Help me, God. And a Christian who, who says, yeah, I'm a sinner and I can't do anything about it. Well, that's a big difference. 
And we have to understand uh, that hypocrisy is pretending that you're trying to do something when actually you're not. I, I, hypocrisy is hiding behind lies that we tell ourselves or we tell others. That's what hypocrisy is. It also, it rewards people, but its rewards die with it. The, the rewards of hypocrisy are temporary. Uh, Jesus was saying in this passage, don't fear the person who can kill you. Feel the person who, after he kills you, can destroy you and send you to hell. You know, you know what we have a tendency to do is that the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, what they wanted is the attention of people. And, and when we are, are behaving in hypocritical means, whose attention are we trying to get? Other people. Well, you got your reward. You got their attention. You, you got their admiration. You got their sympathy. What, whatever you're seeking from other people, you get it. And you get it now. But then it dies with you. Because the only things that we have and keep are the things that are eternal. The Word of God, the souls of men. Admiration of other dies with the people who die. Hypocrisy is temporary. Instead, what we need to do is try to impress God. You can't impress God. I know that. You understand that? But our intention should be to please Him. Because in Hebrews 4.13 it says, There is no creature that is not manifest in His sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees everything. And, and, and we can impress people, but we don't impress God with our pretensions. Hypocrisy also does this. It kills. Its results crucify. It destroys us, ultimately. Uh, you, you may have heard of Nathaniel Hawthorne. He was a novelist in the 1800s. Uh, he's talked about this. He says, No man for any considerable period can wear one face to himself and another to the multitudes without finally getting bewildered as to which one is true. We get so confused. You know, it's exhausting to be a hypocrite because you've you got to remember who you told your lies to. And then you get confused with, did I tell him or not tell him? And it wears you out. There are some people who come to church and are worn out by church. Do you know why? Because they're, they're having to keep up the front. It rather than being a place of refreshment and joy where you can let down your guards and people can love on you and accept you for who you are. We put up these huge barriers and these barriers keep us from receiving the love. And we're, we're, we're working so hard to pretend to be something that we're not that it exhausts us. It's like when you go to that party that you don't want to go to. And you've got to pretend, I'm really having fun. And you're not. And you go home and you're wiped out. Why? Because you're being a hypocrite. It's exhausting. It destroys you. Church shouldn't be an exhausting experience. We shouldn't be pretending we're something that we're not. We should be who we are. And the church should be a safe place where we can love each other and accept for each other as we are, warts included. And we can help other people in the midst of it. How do you recognize a hypocrite? There are seven marks, I think, of hypocrisy and hypocrites. And these are things that, that I think help us to identify it even in ourselves. And again, I said, who struggles with hypocrisy? Everybody raise their hand. Every one of us does. 
Here are seven marks of a, high, uh, of a hypocrite, of hypocrisy. First, they say one thing, but they do another. I love God, but I don't do anything he says, and I reject his teaching. That's hypocrisy, according to John 14, 21. If you love me, keep my commandments. And in, in, in 1 John, I love God, but I don't love you. Uh, as a matter of fact, you just irritate the socks off of me. And I'm going to tell everybody all your flaws and all your... And Denny is running out of the church because I'm pointing at her. Well, Fred did it to me when he was singing, you know. He says, go tell. I'm, oh, yeah, I will, I will, I will. To say you love God and hate your neighbor by gossiping and slandering and, and putting them down, that's hypocrisy. That's not love. Furthest thing from it. I believe the church should be reaching the world with the gospel. And yet we never share the gospel with anyone. That is hypocrisy. You say one thing and you do another. Our responsibility as a Christian is this. To ensure our actions measure up to our words. That's our responsibility. We do what we say. If we love God, we're going to keep his commandments. If we say we love God, then we're going to love his children. First John. If we love God, we're going to share the gospel with others. And failure to do that means that we're failing to, to live up to our words. A second characteristic of a hypocrite is they desire their actions to be seen of men rather than secretly before God. That's what Jesus was talking about in the Sermon on the Mount and the other places. Uh, what the Pharisees want, the attention of men. And so when they see someone looking, they do it. And when they're not, there's something else. What God wants is what we do in secret is what we do in public. And, and, and we should just be doing it secretly before God. I mean, that's our heart attitude in, in, in the midst of it. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, The hypocrite sounds a trumpet before his alms and chooses the corner of the streets for his prayers. To him, virtue in the dark is almost a vice. He can never detect any beauty in virtue unless she has a thousand eyes to look upon her. Then she is something indeed. The true Christian, like the nightingale, sings in the night. But the hypocrite has all his songs in the day when he can be seen and heard of men. Our responsibility, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Our responsibility is not to draw attention to ourselves, but attention to Jesus. And to focus it. And, and when people praise you for the work that you're doing, don't accept it as praise to you. Point them back to Jesus. That's our responsibility. Do our works for Jesus' sake, not for our own reputation and honor and glory before men. A third thing. Hypocrites. They seek the praise of men rather than the praise of God. To the Pharisee, the highest compliment that he could be, receive was to be called rabbi. Oh, a term of respect and honor, a teacher, somebody that knows it. And that's what they desired. They wanted to have great honor in the synagogue when they walked in and people says, oh, rabbi is here. They wanted the praise of men. They wanted men to acknowledge them as opposed to God. Our responsibility as Christians 
And our priority as Christians is to ensure that we're striving to please God and not men. Because all men can do is kill you, but God can do what? Kill you and cast your soul into hell. So what difference does it matter what men think about you? It matters what God thinks about you. And our responsibility is to please him, not men. Fourth thing. Hypocrites are meticulous in minor details and miss the major ones. They focus, they, oh, we missed one on the slides, but that's okay. Uh, they are meticulous in minor details and miss the major. Uh, what did Jesus say about the Pharisees? They strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Do you know how to recognize hypocrisy is in someone? When it's the tiniest things that set them off. The, the tiniest thing, the things that are, oh, what's the big deal? And they have this huge problem with this. And all the while, they've got this huge beam in their eye. But they can see the little speck of dust in yours. And so they will get all sorts of blown out of shape because of this minor thing. They tithe of the mint and the cumin, the anise. Oh, the, the smallest things they'll tithe of. But then they'll ignore taking care of their parents, which is a biblical mandate. I mean... They miss the big things in themselves. Our responsibility as Christians is to make sure of this. Our responsibility is to ensure we are majoring on the right things. And the little things don't matter. If we get upset by the little things, look inside. Look inside. J.C. Ryle, who I mentioned last week, said, People will war over little things and forget the commandment to love one another. We get off on someone because of some little thing they do, but we forget that God said to love them, to be patient with them, to be kind with them, to be merciful with them. Fifth thing. Hypocrites, hypocrisy focuses, focuses on the external and ignores the internal. They make clean the outside of the cup, but the inside of the cup is full of extortions and excess. It's like a book. You, you ever gone and seen a bound book? wonderfully bound in leather, and you open it up, and there's nothing in there? No words? That's a hypocrite. Beautiful on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. They major on making sure everybody thinks they're clean, but their heart is so far from God. Our responsibility as Christians is this. Our responsibility is to have right attitudes, conditions of the heart. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. That's what we need to be majoring on. Not whether we did something or didn't do this something that we think they ought to do. It's the heart attitude. And that's what we need to be majoring on. A clean heart, not just clean hands. The sixth thing. They measure spirituality based on compliance with their standards rather than God's. You gotta do it my way. It's my interpretation. It's my standards. 
you didn't, you didn't, and you add whatever it is. It's something that they've decided what it meant. That, that's what the Pharisees did. You know, they jumped all over the disciples for eating grain. <laughs> you know, picking a little grain and popping it into the mouth. You can't do that unless you wash your hands. Who made up that rule? God? No, it was the Pharisees. They have their own standards of compliance. And that's what a hypocrite does. They measure everybody by their own. Our responsibility is this. We need to make sure we're measuring up to God's standards and not our own. And not someone else's. I'm not required to live up to your standards. I'm required to live up to his standards. Seventh. The hypocrite is severe in the judgment of others, but lenient upon themselves. Do you, do you remember the story that's recorded in John? Uh, they drug a woman to Jesus and said, Jesus, she was caught in the very act of adultery. And Scripture says, stoner. And you know what Jesus did? He knelt down and started scribbling in the dirt. Now, we don't know what he scribbled. Some speculate he began writing the Ten Commandments. You know, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. I do know this. They got awful convicted. And did what? They bugged out. They were very quick to stone her while they themselves were doing the same or worse. That's hypocrisy. Be very severe on others and come down hard and beat them about the head and shoulders. But secretly they're doing the exact same thing. It's just nobody knows it. They haven't been caught. Our responsibility is this. Judge others with the same judgment that we judge ourselves. That's our responsibility. Treat others as you would dare be treated. Don't condemn them if you're doing the exact same thing. Only nobody knows it. How's my life going to be different? How do I respond to the issue of hypocrisy in my own life? How do I strive to beware hypocrisy? Not just in others, but in me. In me. We need to focus, first and foremost, inwardly. And, and, and understand that God wants us to change from the inside out. That, that, that's what God wants. I don't know if you know who Howard Carter is. Howard Carter is the man who discovered King Tut's tomb. He, he went in, he found a coffin, he opened it up, and inside the coffin was another coffin. So he opened that coffin, and inside that coffin he found this marvelous coffin. Wow! And then he opened it up. You know what he found? A mummy. A dirty, rotten, dead body. You can hide it all you want with gold and all sorts of stuff, but inside it was still a dead body. That's not what God wants to find in us. He wants to find something that's living. Something that's different. Carl Rayner once said, the number one cause of atheism is Christians. Those who proclaim God with their mouths and deny Him with their lifestyles, that is what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable. 
I like Edward Guest's poem. Edward Guest was a poet of the early 1900s. This is what he wrote in a poem called Sermons We See. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Find counsel is confusing, but examples always clear. And the best of all preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see good put into action is what everybody needs. Work on the inside. The godly person hears and feels convicted when the word is presented and does something about it from the inside. Not, not merely cleaning up the hands, but dealing with the heart issues. I think there are three things we need to remember and focus on from Luke 12. One, li live life based on the internals, not the external. Now, notice in, in Luke 12, 1, it says, and when the multitudes had gathered together. So, I mean, they were trampling on each other. There were so many of them. And, and that's a fine time to elevate yourself when everybody is looking. And, and yet, Jesus was not impressed by that. What, what Jesus wants us to do is focus on obedience to the Father's will. As, a mo as opposed to just merely letting people see us and, and to act out things. God wants sacrifice, but not the mere physical things, but the sacrifice of the heart. The heart that is attuned to Him. Live a life where reality matches the perception. I think a second thing we need to do is live a life in public that is consistent with our private lives. As I was preparing for this sermon, uh, I was reading an illustration. And, and it said that in many internet browsing um, engines, there's a thing called private browsing. It, it, it's something where it doesn't keep a record or a history uh, of the places that you've gone and done. It's also called the porn mode. Do you know that most of us have private browsing in our Christian lives? Do you understand what I'm saying? We, we, we don't want anybody to know what we've been doing. We, we don't want others to hear what we said. And we do it behind closed doors. And we think as long as we do it behind closed doors, it doesn't matter. Nobody's affected, just me. Understand this, God sees. God sees. We shouldn't do things because it's okay, nobody will ever know. There is someone who does know. <laughs> Do you remember a movie that came out years ago called The Truman Show? Do you remember that? About this guy who didn't realize that his life was actually a television show. Everybody watched 24-7. And his life was just staged. And everybody saw everything he did. That's us. Before God, our life is The Truman Show. And finally, live a life pleasing to God, not to man. Jesus said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like white-walled, whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. Every one of us struggles with hypocrisy. 
And yet God wants us to be transparent and open. He knows and he loves us the way that we are, but he wants us to be different. Not hypocrites, but ones living to honor and please him. Join me in prayer.